Hey, this is Zach. Thanks for tuning in to Turning the Scale. Today we're gonna to talk about tools that you can use to help you lose weight. What's up you guys? My name is Zach and welcome to Turning the Scale. Like I said, today we're going to talk about tools that can help you with your weight loss journey. So when it comes to weight loss, there are various tools out there and approaches available that can assist individuals like yourselves in their journey. So while it's important to remember that consulting with a healthcare professional is crucial to determine the most suitable option for you, I'm going to provide an overview of some tools commonly used to aid in weight loss, including bariatric surgery. It's a controversial subject, but yes, we're going to talk about it. Medications and meditation techniques. So first, let's talk about bariatric surgery. Bariatric surgery is a surgical procedure performed on the stomach or intestines to help individuals lose weight. It's typically recommended for people with severe obesity who have, who have been unsuccessful with other weight loss methods. So there are different types of bariatric surgery, um, each with its own benefits and considerations. These procedures work by reducing the size of the stomach or rerouting digest, uh, the digestive system. Uh, this leads to reduced food intake and nutrient absorption. So if you're going to have these types of surgeries, it's important to note that you're going to need um, you're going to need uh, vitamins, uh, uh, probably a vitamin supplement. Your doctor is definitely going to prescribe you a vitamin supplement uh, post-surgery if that's the route that you decide to go. So bariatric surgery, also known as weight loss surgery, is a medical pr procedure that helps individuals with uh, severe obesity to lose weight by making changes to their digestive system. Um, it's considered a beneficial treatment option for people who have tried and failed weight uh, to lose weight through other methods like diet and exercise. So here's some value, valuable information uh, to know about bariatric surgery. So. First, there are the types of bariatric Including. surgery. One, gastric bypass surgery. Uh, this procedure involves creating a small pouch at the top of the stomach uh, and connecting it directly to the small intestine, bypassing uh, a portion of the stomach uh, and the first part of the small intestine. Uh, there's also the sleeve gastrectomy. So this surgery involves removing a portion of the stomach leaving a smaller banana shaped sleeve. And then there's the, uh, this is the long one, the biliopancreatic diversion with duodenal shit, switch, switch. <laughs> uh, and this surgery involves removing a large portion of the stomach, similar to the sleeve gastrectomy, but it also reroutes the small intestine uh, to reduce nutrient absorption. So, Bariatric surgery can result in significant weight loss, which can lead to numerous health benefits. 
Uh, surgery can improve or resolve conditions like type 2 diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, high cholesterol, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Uh, many individuals experience uh, improved mobility, increased energy levels, and better overall well-being after weight loss surgery. So really quick, let's talk about long-term weight management post-surgical post intervention. Uh, bariatric surgery can provide a long-term weight loss, can provide long-term weight loss and help individuals maintain a healthy weight. However, after the five to six year mark, sometimes even sooner, uh, people have reported that the surgery, uh, that after the surgery, they've gained some weight back. Now this is why it is important to maintain a healthy lifestyle through eating and exercise, even though you had the surgery. The surgery itself does not contribute to any weight gain, but any changes that you haven't made to your lifestyle choices can result in the surgery not working as it should. Um, so bariatric surgery is typically recommended for individuals with a body mass index of 40 or higher, um, a BMI of 35 to 39.9, I think, 40, uh, with obesity-related illness uh, conditions uh, are also considered. However, eligibility criteria may vary depending on the specific surgery and the guidelines of treating medical of the the treating uh, medical facility. So, candidates for surgery usually undergo a thorough evaluation by a healthcare team to determine their suitability. So, like surgery, like any, or like any surgery, uh, bariatric procedures do carry risks. Uh, potential complications can include infection, bleeding, blood clots, uh, leaks in the GI system. Uh, and adverse reactions to anesthesia. However, the risks are generally low and healthcare professionals do take precautions to minimal, minimize potential complications. Bariatric surgery requires comprehensive, it requires a comprehensive approach uh, to pre and post-op care. So this includes dietary counseling, uh, lifestyle modifications, uh, before before surgery um, after the procedure patients typically follow a specific diet plan uh, receiving ongoing medical monitoring and participate in support groups to ensure successful uh, successful long-term outcomes um, surgery is not a standalone solution for any weight loss it does require a commitment to life long lifestyle changes that includes adopting a healthy diet, engaging in regular physical activity, and practicing mindful eating habits. So portion control, um, chewing more than you feel like you need to, really taste your food, enjoy it, you know? Um, these changes are gonna be essential for long-term success and, uh, and weight maintenance. Um, bariatric surgery is not without its psychological considerations uh, that can have a significant impact on uh, an individual's emotional and psychological well-being. It is crucial to address any underlying psychological problems before and after surgery. Many medical centers offer counseling and support services to help patients navigate these changes. Um, you also want to do regular follow-up appointments with the surgical team and your doctor, and that's going to be essential to monitor your progress. So now let's switch and we'll talk about medications. Um, there are medications out there that can be prescribed by a medical professional to aid in weight loss efforts. These medications are typically recommended for people with a body mass index above a, thir uh, above a certain threshold. <laughs> above a certain threshold or those uh, who have weight related uh, health conditions. So common medications include appetite suppressants, um, uh, other medications that affect how the body absorbs and metabolizes fat. It's important to note that medications should be used under close supervision 
um, and in conjunction, again, with lifestyle changes. Uh, medications can be used as a tool for weight loss in certain circumstances. They are typically prescribed in conjunction with lifestyle modifications such as a regular diet and exercise. Guys, I'm going to harp on that all day long. You can have any kind of bariatric surgery or uh, uh, medication change uh, to your diet. is If you're not following the lifestyle change, if you're not going out there and changing your diet, exercising, portion control, healthy eating habits, it's all for nothing because any surgery or modif uh, any surgical modification or any um, medication that you take is not going to change the, uh, the fact that you're not changing your lifestyle. That is that you're not eating right and you're not exercising. Um, so here's some important information about uh, medications used for weight loss. So FDA, FDA approved weight loss medications, and there are several uh, that are approved by the uh, FDA. Uh, these medications are typically prescribed for individuals with a body mass index of 30 or higher or a BMI of 27 or higher with health-related conditions. Some commonly prescribed FDA weight loss medications include Orlistat. So Orlistat works by inhibiting the absorption of dietary fat in the intestines, and it is available both over the counter and uh, a prescription strength form. Uh, again, just talk to your doctor before you go through, uh, start taking any kind of medication. Naltrexone, bupropion, uh, this combination, this is, it's a combination medication that affects the re reward system of the brain and reduces food cravings and increase uh, energy expenditure. Um, Manjaro. So Manjaro is a new, again, uh, drug that is gaining some popularity. Um, Manjaro is a medication that was previously marketed under the brand name Belvic. Um, it's a selective serotonin receptor agonist that helps reduce appetite and promote a feeling of fullness. Um, it was approved by the FDA, talking about Belvic, um, for long-term weight management in adults with obesity and overweight individuals with weight-related conditions. However, in, it, it is important to understand that uh, in February of 2020, the manufacturer voluntarily withdrew the medication from the market due to concerns about an increased risk of cancer. Um, this medication has returned after intense testing and modification with the increased risk of cancer no longer really a concern. But again, you just have to make your best judgment on that. Um, what else? So there's also uh, Ozempic. Ozempic is a, med or a medication that is also approved by the FDA to treat type 2 diabetes. It belongs to a uh, class of medications called uh, glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1 uh, receptor agonist. Uh, Ozempic helps lower blood sugar levels, promotes weight loss, and reduces the risk of cardiovascular events in people with type 2 diabetes. Uh, it is administered once weekly. Uh, it's an injection, just like Manjaro. Um, there's also Jard Jardiance, Jardiance, I can't remember. Um, and that's another medication that's approved for type 2 diabetes. Uh, and that's a sodium glucose co-transporter, I think something like that too, SGLT2 um, inhibitor that works by increasing the uh, excretion of glucose in the urine, and that leads to a lower blood sugar levels. Jardiance has also uh, shown benefits in reducing the risk of cardiovascular events like Ozempic um, and slowing the progression of kidney disease in people with, in people with type 2 diabetes. Um, so... Like Ozempic, we have Wagovi. So Wagovi is um, also a semaglutide, uh, but Wagovi is a higher dose formulation of semaglutide. Um, it was approved by the FDA in June 2021 um, as a also a once a week injectable uh, medication for chronic weight management in adults with obesity or overweight individuals with weight-related conditions. Um, it works by reducing appetite, increasing feelings of fullness, 
and it promotes weight loss. Uh, uh, that with that promoting weight loss. Uh, Wogovi has shown significant weight loss results in clinical trials. So uh, talk to your doctor about it. Um, and the last one, there, guys, there are so many more than this, but these are the more common ones. Um, the last one that I do want to touch on, I'm also on this one, is uh, metformin. So metformin's an oral medication that's commonly prescribed for the management of type 2 diabetes. And while it's primary, primary use, is not for weight loss. It is noteworthy that it is often prescribed off-label to help with weight reduction in individuals with obesity and insulin resistance. So metform metformin works by reducing glucose production in the liver, uh, and it improves uh, insulin sensitivity and decreases the appetite. It is usually taken two or three times a day with meals. Uh, so medications can help individuals achieve modest weight loss when used as a part of a comprehensive weight loss management plan. Um, it's important to note that medications alone are not a um, long-term solution for weight loss. They should just be used in conjunction with the lifestyle changes to achieve sustainable uh, results. Um, medications are prescribed by healthcare professionals, guys. Uh, and these healthcare pro professionals carefully evaluate your medical history, your current medications, potential side effects. So regular monitoring is necessary to assess the medication's effectiveness by managing side effects and ensuring the safety ultimately. Um, <clears throat> weight loss medications can have side effects which vary depending on the specific medication um, the common ones, mainly like GI symptoms, like uh, diarrhea. Um, I know Orlistat has like oily stools, um, an increased heart rate, elevated blood pressure, dry mouth, insomnia, stuff like that. Um, and it's essential to discuss potential side effects with a healthcare professional before starting any weight loss medication. Um, it's important to note that weight loss medication may not be suitable for you and may come with uh, its own risks and contraindications. They are generally not recommended for people who are pregnant or breastfeeding, um, have uncontrolled high blood pressure, uh, heart disease, um, uh, people that have a history of substance abuse, that's a good one, or have uh, psychiatric conditions. It's crucial to Disclose your full medical history with your doctor, um, any medications that you take um, before starting any kind of weight loss medication. So again, I'm going to harp on it. Weight loss medications are most effective when combined with lifestyle modifications like a healthy diet, physical activity, and making a sustainable, sustainable behavior changes. Um, and these are the changes that are going to promote your long-term weight loss management and your overall health. <clears throat> so the use of these medications should be discussed with a healthcare professional. Um, they have specific indications, potential side effects, considerations that uh, need to be evaluated based on your medical history and your current uh, medications and your overall health. Um, you know, finally, guys, there's medication tech or meditation techniques. So while not directly targeting weight loss, meditation techniques can be a valuable tool to support overall well-being and weight loss management. Uh, stress and emotional factors can contribute to weight gain and hinder weight loss efforts. Uh, meditation and mindfulness practices can help uh, people develop a greater awareness of their eating patterns. Uh, emotions and triggers guys check out my last video to, that talks about binge eating that's going to be a great one uh that um really hint, uh, talks about this um people become more attuned to their body signals uh, of hunger and fullness and making it that and that makes it easier to make healthier choices uh and avoid emotional eating like binge eating um and to finish up guys 
I'm going to continue to harp on this. These tools should be considered as part of a comprehensive approach that includes lifestyle modifications, um, adopting a balanced diet, engaging in regular physical activity, seeking support from healthcare um, and healthcare professionals, um, nutritionalists, uh, therapists who specialize in weight loss management. Um, each person's weight loss journey is going to be unique. And finding the right combination of tools, if you decide to go the tool route, um, and strategies is going to be essential for long-term success. So that's all I have for you guys uh, today. I hope that you have a great day. Make sure that you get out there, do something beneficial to your body because it's the only one that you have. So with that, I'm out. Peace.